Hey everybody, I'm Justin with ExtremeTerrain.com and today I'm breaking down and installing the CVF Turbo Back Exhaust System with the black tips, available for your 2021 and newer 2.7 liter EcoBoost powered Bronco at home. Now the CVF system that we have here today is gonna provide V6 Bronco owners with an increase in volume and exhaust flow thanks to the mandrel bent Turbo Back design here along with the high flow catalytic converters, along with a very high quality build thanks to the 304 grade stainless steel. Then finally, everything will exit out of the dual four inch black tips, all for right around that 13 to $1,400 price point. A lot to cover here with this system, so let's just jump into it. And what do you say we start with the sound clips you guys heard at the very start of this video? And what I have to say is here with the CVF system, despite replacing nearly 80 plus percent of your Bronco's factory exhaust system, the volume does remain aggressive, but not unruly. Now you would think by adding a set of high flow cats, a more aggressive performance based muffler, that the tone and volume would be over the top and shake all the windows in your neighborhood, but that's really not the case. In fact, going to my Wake the Neighbor scale, I have the CVF Turbo Back system coming in at a strong three out of five on my one to five or one to Wake the Neighbor scale. Now the tone is nice and deep here, which let's face it, isn't always achievable with an EcoBoost engine. I really dig the deep tone overall. Volume, very livable on a daily driver system out there. So it's certainly not gonna drive you crazy on long trips. Now what's even better is that despite that deeper tone overall and the more aggressive sound, Drone is all but non-existent here with the CVF, which is always a nice thing to point out when talking aftermarket exhaust. All right, let's move into construction here, guys. And if you're really unsure of what a turbo back system consists of, what do you say we break it down for you? Spell it out a little bit more in our construction block. Now, as that name suggests, you are replacing all of your factory exhaust from those turbochargers back. So with that said, you're essentially combining two very popular modifications here, an aftermarket catted down pipe along with an aftermarket cat back exhaust. Now, because of that, you are getting a set of high flow cats here to replace your stockers, mandrel bent three inch tubing throughout, leading into and out of an included resonator before exiting or entering rather your cruiser muffler from CVF. And then finally, everything does dump out of the twin four inch black tips underneath that rear bumper. Now, all of your hangers are in their factory location here. You do receive a nice flex pipe. Uh, obviously, all of your O2 bungs are in place and everything has very, very nice welds here for the CVF system. I've handled a lot of their stuff on the Mustang side and I have to say I've been very impressed with the build quality. Now, what's even better is the entire system has been made from 304 grade stainless steel tubing. So you're getting a very durable material here with excellent corrosion resistance along with CVF's lifetime warranty. Now, I do wanna point out here, guys, that CVF states you do not need a tune to run this system, but it does replace your factory cat, so therefore it is not going to be CARB certified. So Bronco owners in California and other states that do abide by that, definitely keep that in mind. Now moving into our pricing segment and the CVF system is going to hover around that 13 to $1,400 price point, certainly making this one of the more expensive systems in the category for your six gen Bronco at home. However, you have to consider that this is really one of the only turbo back systems currently offered on the site. So that is one thing to keep in mind. And ultimately you will find systems from Borla, Magnaflow in this same general price point, but those are simply cat backs only. You have to remember you're getting a down pipe, high flow cats in addition to a cat back. So when you really weigh those things out, I think this is a pretty fair bargain, especially when we're considering the 304 grade stainless steel throughout and the corresponding lifetime warranty. All right, last but not least, let's shift our focus over to the installation and the site's gonna go middle of the road, two out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter here. And I would say at least two hours to complete from start to finish. But now to give you a better idea of how this one might go down in the garage or driveway at home, let's throw it out to the shop for our detailed walkthrough and tool breakdown. Check it out. Tools required for this install include a couple different size impact guns, an electric ratchet, a clip remover tool, an exhaust hanger remover tool, a couple different size ratchets, a rubber mallet, 15, 16, and 18 millimeter wrenches, 
a 7 8 inch wrench, 13 and 15 millimeter ratcheting wrench, a plastic pry tool, a pick, Phillips head screwdriver, a couple different size extensions, a swivel adapter, 13, 15, and 16 millimeter swivel sockets, 7, 10, 13, 15, 18, and 21 millimeter sockets, a pry bar, and a very long extension. In addition, you'll also need pole jacks or jack stands. What's up guys? Today we're installing an exhaust on our Bronco, so let's get started. Now we're gonna start right at the back of our muffler. We've got a 15 millimeter nut on this clamp that we're gonna loosen up, and then we can go after our hangers. Next we'll grab an exhaust hanger remover tool to remove our two hangers, and then we can wiggle this out of place. Just get a hand on that before you pop the second one free. And then you can just start wiggling this out of place. Next we can follow our mid pipe up to the flange. We have two 15 millimeter nuts we need to remove and then we can pop off these two 13 millimeter bolts as well. Then we're gonna grab a 13 millimeter socket first and remove this hanger bracket. And then I'm grabbing a 15 millimeter swivel socket for the two flange nuts. Now we can follow this pipe back from the flange to our hanger. We'll take the exhaust hanger remover tool to pop that out and then we can remove this whole pipe. So now with our cat back out of the way, we're gonna start working on our cats and our down pipes. Now the first thing we're gonna do is come to our fender well and remove our fender liner. We have a bunch of Phillips head screw clips as well as push clips and a couple screws holding this in place. So now we're gonna start from the back side and work our way forward. Now all of these Phillips head screw clips, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a finger on the outer edge and then get a Phillips head screwdriver on the center section. You don't wanna put a lot of pressure on the screwdriver because you can just push this right back into the clip. If it stops pulling out, you can get a clip remover tool in there while you twist to apply a little pressure. Now at the top here, we have a few seven millimeter screws. So I'm gonna take a seven millimeter socket for those. Now moving towards the front, we're gonna start at the bottom. You can ignore these three clips and get the two below them with the clip remover tool. Save that leaf for later. And now we can get our last two seven millimeter screws and pull this whole liner out. Now we can start above the strut tower here. And now repeat that process on the other side. Next, I'm gonna remove this bracket that was right behind our fender liner. This is gonna be in the same spot on both sides. This is just gonna give us a little more access to get in there to get to our O2 sensor connectors that are way back in there. So take a 10 millimeter socket to remove the nut. And then you can grab a clip remover tool to get back behind that clip and pop that out of place. I'm just gonna throw that nut back on there so we don't lose it. And then do that same thing on the other side. So now we can follow these O2 sensor wires back. We've got the one that you can see coming off our upstream, but then that blue wire back there is for our downstream. Both the connectors are right next to each other. This is really the only good look you can get at this, and I'm gonna block the entire thing once I get my hand in there. 
but you're just gonna reach back to those connectors, push in on the tabs and remove them. So there we've got the downstream connector. You've just got that black tab. We'll get that out of the way. Now on the upstream, there is a red locking tab on the other side that you're gonna have to push out before you can press in on the tab to remove it. Now we can remove our upstream O2 sensor here. So you can grab a 7 8 wrench or a 22 millimeter wrench, or if you have a specific O2 sensor socket, you can use that as well. And then once you break that free, you can twist it to remove it. Now you can hold the wire up to make this a little bit easier so it doesn't get twisted up. And now we'll go down to the downstream and do that same thing. Now the downstream is a little bit more difficult to get to. You can break it loose with your wrench from underneath. This is the only side you're gonna really be able to see. And then you can get a hand on it from above to twist it the rest of the way out. So once you have that loose and spinning, you can come from the top here and twist it out. So now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, we're removing the O2 sensors. The connectors are in a slightly different place on the other side, so I'm gonna show you where those are and how to remove them. Now on the other side, our two connectors for our O2 sensors are on the outside of the transmission here. So for our downstream, we can get up under from here and just push in the tab and pull out. And then our upstream, we can come from the top here. We can slide towards the front of the car to pop that out. There's gonna be that red tab that you wanna pull out and then you can push in on the gray and pop that connector out. Now that red tab is exactly the same on the other side. That's the one that you couldn't see. So now we can start on removing our cats. Next we can come to our flange here at the back of our turbo and remove our two nuts. There's one over here and there's one behind it that you're not gonna be able to see. Now I'm gonna grab a 15 millimeter socket to remove these two nuts. Now depending on how many miles your Bronco has, these might be a little rusty, in which case you wanna be very careful when you remove these nuts because you don't wanna snap these turbo studs. Now, if you're feeling it bind up when you're loosening it up, just flip the ratchet, go back to tightening and work it back and forth to work some of that free. If you have a lot of rust on the threads, you can use a wire brush before you start loosening up these nuts. So I'm gonna start on the inside here, because this one's gonna be a pain. And then we can work on the outside one. And then do that exact same thing on the other side. Next, we can come to the clamp at our crossover pipe here. We're gonna take a 16 millimeter wrench and loosen that up. So now we have to work on fishing out our down pipes. So to do that, we're gonna to have to remove this whole cross member. Now our gas tank skid plate overlaps this. So we're gonna to have to fully remove these two bolts and loosen up some of the bolts working backwards. Now, before you start this, you're gonna grab a pole jack. If you're doing this on a lift to support your transfer case, don't have it hanging too much. Um, if you're doing it on the ground, you can do that with a floor jack. So I'm gonna grab an 18 millimeter socket, remove these two, loosen up these two, and the one on the other side. Yeah. 
Now we can come to the center of our cross member. We have two 21 millimeter nuts up here. So I'm gonna grab a 21 millimeter socket with a good extension and loosen those up and remove them. Now we can start working on the mounts for our cross member. We've got 18 millimeter nuts and 15 millimeter bolts. So I'm taking a 15 millimeter swivel socket with an 18 millimeter wrench to loosen all of these up. Now I'm gonna leave one bolt in at each of these points until I can go grab a buddy to help me lift this out just so we don't drop it. And I'll pull one of these out, leave the other one in for now. And now we can do that same thing on the forward mount. Yeah, I'm gonna leave one of those bolts in. Now I'm gonna go grab myself a buddy. We're gonna start prying and hammering to get this out. So now I've got myself a buddy. We've got some pry bars. We're gonna pull those remaining bolts out. We've got one on each corner left. And then we're gonna work on prying this down. We might bottom out on this gas tank skid plate here. We have a little bit of flex, so hopefully we'll have enough. Otherwise, we might have to loosen up some more bolts. And now we just gotta sneak this out from under that skid plate. Next, we have to remove our two mounts that are holding this crossover pipe hanger in place. We've got two 15 millimeter bolts on this one. We have the same on the other side, but we also have an extra bolt, one 15 millimeter that we can remove to pop that side off. So now we're gonna take a 15 millimeter swivel socket to remove these two bolts, and that'll unbolt our little rubber isolator here. So now on this side, we're gonna start with that 15 millimeter bolt, and then we can pull our bracket off of here, and then we're gonna remove the two 15s there once we have more access to those bolt heads. So I've got a 15 mil ratcheting wrench. Break that loose, and then we can just remove that. And then we'll grab that 15 millimeter socket, pop these bolts out. I'm gonna get a hand on here to support the weight. Now that we have our mount removed, I grabbed myself a buddy. We're gonna try to wiggle this out of place. It's now ready to start installing our new exhaust. I've got our driver side downpipe here. It's gonna be the same process for the passenger side downpipe. We have these two plugs in our O2 bungs that we can just twist out. And then I've got our upstream and our downstream O2 sensor. We have this spacer that's gonna be going on our downstream. It's the same size nut as the O2 sensor. So we're gonna get a 7 8 wrench and install both of these. So now from our flange, we're gonna go back to the downstream O2 sensor, thread in our spacer, take our 7 8 wrench, snug that up, and then we'll thread in our downstream O2. Tighten that up with the same wrench. And then we'll thread in our upstream O2. And now you can do the same exact thing for the passenger side downpipe and we'll get these installed on the Bronco. So now we can raise up our downpipe into place. I'm gonna go from under, up, just making sure not to pinch the wires on anything on the way in. Now I'll get that over the studs and just thread those nuts on hand tight for now to hold it in place. Now one important note before we continue is for your downstream O2 sensors, you're gonna have to swap the driver's side to the passenger side and the passenger side to the driver's side. 
Now, if you keep the driver's side from the original placement on the driver's side, then it's gonna to be too short to reach the connector at the top of the trans. And on the other side, you're gonna have a lot of extra slack left over. So you swap those around, passenger to driver, driver to passenger, and then we can go ahead and plug these in. So now we can go ahead and plug in our two sensors away at the top of the trans there. Once again, our upstream O2 sensor is gonna to connect to the left. Our downstream is gonna to connect to the right. I'm gonna block this whole shot with my arm once I reach in there. But on the upstream, on the receiver side of this connector, there's gonna be a red locking tab that you're gonna to have to press down towards this connector once you have it clipped into place. And now we can come over to the passenger side and plug in our O2 sensors as well. And once again, we're gonna press in that red locking tab on our connector, and then hook that back onto the little clip. So now we can get our V-band clamps onto our two pipes and get ready to put our crossover pipe in. So I'm gonna take this nut off of the one side of the V-band so we can open it up. And I'm just gonna stretch it and slide it over the pipe. I'm just gonna put it on the outside of it for now. And then I'll do the same thing on the other one. So now we can raise our crossover pipe up into place. And then slide our mount. And then I'm gonna raise that up to where it sits and thread in a couple bolts. So now with our trans mount loosely in place, we can go ahead and connect our two V-band connections. So now we're just gonna get our pipes together and get that V-band over the flange. We'll get that so that that bolt's showing. And then we can thread our nut on. Do that same thing on this side, and we'll just get this clamp hand tight for now. Now we can go back and tighten down our trans mount. So I'm taking a 15 millimeter swivel socket on an extension to do that. And now repeat on the other side. And now we can put back the other half of our rubber insulator. And we'll take that bolt and thread it in as far as we can get it by hand. And then we'll take a 15 millimeter ratcheting wrench to finish it off. So now we're gonna raise our cross member back up into place. I'm gonna try to slide it into this mount first since we're gonna have to pull down on this gas tank skid plate a little bit. Once we get it in there, everything else is pretty open so we can line it up. I've got myself a buddy on the other side. We've got some rubber mallets uh, in case we need to beat it in a little bit. And now you can take your longer bolts and go through the back and shorter bolts go through the front and then you can throw your nuts on the back side and now we can take a 15 millimeter socket and 18 millimeter wrench and tighten up these bolts and now same thing for our rear mount
And now you can do that same thing on the other side. And now we can lower the pole jack, supporting the weight of our transmission and transfer case. And then we'll get a 21 millimeter socket with extension to thread our nuts back onto the two studs. And then we can throw that onto an impact gun and tighten those down. Now we can come back to the back of our turbo and we're gonna tighten down our two nuts. You wanna make sure that you're doing this evenly so that you're evenly having the pipe compress against the gasket. Now the inside one's gonna be a little bit harder to see. So I've got a long extension with a 15 millimeter swivel socket to get to that one. And now we'll go back up and fully tighten the other side. And now we'll come back to the outside using a 15 millimeter socket and tighten that the rest of the way down. And now we can reinstall our bracket and we're gonna get the push clip into the hole first. and then thread on that 10 millimeter nut. And I'll just straighten out the bracket and take a 10 millimeter socket to tighten it down. And now you can repeat that process of tightening the flange and reinstalling the bracket on the other side and then we can reinstall our fender liner. So now we're ready to reinstall our fender liner. So I'm gonna take the center flap and get it over the top of our strut first. And then I'm gonna get this lip up under the fender here. And then we can pop these two clips back into their holes. And then we'll just get this nice and centered up and we can start putting our clips and our screws back in. And now we can start reinstalling our clips. And then we can also get our screws for the top here. And take our seven millimeter socket and tighten these down. And now we'll just continue that process on the other side of the liner. And then once again, take that seven millimeter socket and tighten these down. And then repeat that process for the fender liner on the other side. And now we can come back under and go to our V bands. We're gonna take a 13 millimeter socket to tighten these down. Depending on where your clamp's positioned, you might need a swivel like I do to get to it. Now this one's pretty uh, straight on, so we don't need the swivel for this one. So now we can reattach our gas tank skid plate to the frame. I've got a pole jack here, so we're just gonna raise this up. And then we can reinstall the bolts that we removed and tighten down the bolts that we loosened up. And now we'll grab an 18 millimeter socket and tighten all of these down. So now we can come back over to our stock exhaust. We're gonna need to pop off this hanger as well as remove our exhaust gasket because we will be reusing that. Now, if your Bronco has a lot of miles on it, it might be a good idea to just replace this and get a new one. So I'm gonna take an exhaust hanger remover tool, slide that in, and pop off our hanger. And then we can slide that onto our new pipe. And then we'll just slide our exhaust gasket off of those studs. Now that gasket doesn't want to come off, so I'm going to take a plastic pry tool 
just to get that off the studs. So now we've got the hard part done and we're on to just the simple cat back portion of this install. The next thing we're gonna do is come to our flange, install our new gasket. We're gonna put our bolts in from the front side back and then we're gonna put those through the gasket and then we can get our next pipe on. So now we can pop the included bolt through the flange and with this, we can just thread it into the gasket there. And then we'll do that same thing on the other side. This will also help hold our studs in place while we get our pipe on. And now we'll raise this up into place. You want that dip going down. And then you can slide that hanger into place. And then we can thread our nuts on the other side here. And before we tighten anything down, we'll get those two 13 millimeter bolts to hold our hanger in place. Now we can grab a 16 millimeter socket and a 15 millimeter wrench and tighten down those flange bolts. And I'm gonna to switch to a 13 millimeter swivel socket to tighten down our hanger bolts. So now next up, you're either gonna install an extension pipe or the over axle pipe here. If you have the four door, you're going to be using this extension pipe right after the flange. Now, since we're doing this on a two door, we can just ignore this pipe and continue with our over axle pipe. So now the first thing I'm gonna do is take one of our three inch clamps and slide it over the muffler inlet. Might have to loosen up that nut a little bit. And then I'm gonna slide this over the axle into our pipe, and then I can install this rod into our rubber isolator. Now, if it's a little hard to slide through, you can get some penetrating lubricant. I'm just gonna get microfiber under it. And now some lube in there, we should be able to slide it through. And now we'll go back to our clamp slide that into position and take a 15 millimeter socket to tighten it down. Now next we can install our axle back portion. So we're gonna take another three inch clamp and slide it over the muffler inlet. And then we can raise this up and slide it onto our pipe. And then we can get our rods into our isolators. Now on this side, I'm just gonna make it easy on myself and pop off this rubber isolator and I'll just slide it onto both rods at the same time. So we'll grab the exhaust hanger remover tool, pop that off, and I'm gonna get it started on our axle back rod and then lift it up. And then with that done, we can come back to our clamp and take a 15 millimeter socket to tighten it down. And now last thing we have to do is install our tips. So I'm gonna throw one of the two and a half inch clamps on the tip and then slide that onto the pipe. And now we'll get our clamp into place and take a 15 millimeter socket to tighten it down. And then repeat that same step on the other side. So that'll wrap up this review and install of the CVF Turbo Back Exhaust System with black tips for your 2021 and newer 2.7 liter EcoBoost Bronco. Thank you for watching, and for all things Bronco, keep it right here at ExtremeTerrain.com.